Welcome. Yay, we're back. This is Southern Bells and Chilling Tales. I'm Kristen. And I'm Rebecca. This is the podcast. This is... (laughs) (laughs) Um, No pressure. Okay, sure. Right. (laughs) We're the podcast that brings you paranormal tales, true crime, and any other basic shit we want to talk about. Basic shit. Basic shit. (laughs) Because we're basic bitches. Oh, for sure. (laughs) (laughs) I know I am. Did you wear your Uggs? Do you have your latte? I wear a bear paw because Uggs are too expensive. (laughs) Of course, they think they got Uggs now and they're getting expensive, but it's fine. A few years, well, it's been a long time ago, actually, probably like 10 years ago, Mama bought me like some boots. They looked like Uggs, but they weren't. Mm -hmm. They were so cute and I really wanted to wear them, but it really just doesn't match my personality. Mm -hmm. And the boys were still really little and they used to put them on and pretend like they disappeared and they were, (sighs) I think they called them the boots of invisibility or something like that. That's cute. So... Boots of revealing, that's what it was. All right, so even though we've already been talking for a couple hours, (laughs) how are you? (laughs) I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. You ready Um, for Christmas? No. I mean, my outdoor is pretty much ready, but I I decorate until I can't anymore, which means (laughs) the week after Christmas. (laughs) Oh, no. No. I decorate up till Christmas just because I'm like Ariel, like, I want more. (laughs) (laughs) all right so we try to just get like one thing new a year but it always ends up being more than one thing well now we know you have 20 thingamabobs Uh, things are plenty Mm -hmm. Um, i would like to point out like i said earlier i decorate for christmas but it's not like when i decorate for halloween however if you'll notice my school couple is decorated for christmas this girl in our neighborhood had a skeleton cat and then when Christmas came, she put a little Santa hat on him, and then she started decorating him <laughs> year-round for different holidays, and it was so cute. And then she took it down one year, and everybody's like, oh, where's Skella Cat, you know? <laughs> when Josh and I first got married, Mama bought me this duck figurine, and it had different outfits for, like, different occasions. Cute. And so you'd put, like, the shamrock hat on it, or, like... A Valentine's Day vest on it. It was yeah. It was fun for a little while. Okay, so is there anything that's happened since the last podcast? I would like to point out to everyone that if you go to Gaylord Palms in Kissimmee, <laughs> Florida, and you go to Mrs. Claus's chalet to hear her story, you will play the Christmas alphabet game. For every letter, you must say a word that begins with it, like A. B. No, no, no. 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 Sorry, I coughed when you said it. So, like. Uh, Alphabet. (laughs) Sorry, it was obvious. (laughs) It's an A word. Okay. Is it an animal you said? No. I'm sorry. No. Okay, repeat the directions. I told you I'm not an audio learner. (laughs) Good grief. Could you write down the directions? So, for instance, the Christmas alphabet game. For every letter, starting with A, you say a word that is Christmas-themed that begins with that letter. Oh, God. I would be horrible at this game. So you said A? Yes. So what's a Christmas word that starts with A? Antler. There you go. Yay! Then B. Why is it only me? <laughs> Bells. See? Okay. So we're sitting in Mrs. Claus's chalet. And this businessman sitting in front of our friend and I, very confidently, for the letter Z, people, goes, xylophone. (laughs) And I wanted to just end the world. Because some grown man out there in a business suit is managing some company thinking that xylophone begins with the letter Z. And even Mrs. Claus up there looked at him like, what an idiot. This one you go, is that an alternate spelling? His wife just leaned over and like patted him on the back like, you're an idiot. It's okay. <laughs> oh my God, I would have just laughed it off. Yeah. I had to have a beer after that because I was like, every time my faith in humanity builds up, some dumbass <laughs> is going to come through and spell xylophone with a Z. I mean, can we be more upset with the person who spells xylophone with an X? <laughs> At least they chose something, okay? We probably pronounce it different than they originally did. 
Probably. Because you know how, like, knowledge, back in the day, they did actually say knowledge. Did you ever watch um, Game of Thrones? Um, no. The, I can't get into it. The one little girl is teaching this older gentleman to read, and he's trying to read the word knights, and he reads it, knigets. <laughs> I mean. So, anyway, that's that's what has been happening with me since the last podcast. Faith in humanity needs to be restored. <laughs> How about you? Um, faith in humanity? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to go there. It's been low already. So. <laughs> <laughs> no new disappointments. Good for you. <laughs> but I do want to tell you, I bought a new book. Ooh. Salem's Lot by Stephen <gasps> King. Did you? Yes. It was at Target, and it was right there on the little shelf. I don't know if it was on sale or... Anyway, you know that one random... Yes. ...that's over there by the food? And I was like... I think I'm going to buy that. So I bought it. Well, I'm proud of you. You've taken the first step, which is buying the book. I'm so yes. excited. I finally watched the series Wednesday on Netflix, which was highly enjoyable. So since this episode, even though we're not getting out as many as I would originally like, this is meant to be kind of a Christmas holiday special, whatever. So I want to ask you, do you remember any childhood Christmas traditions, especially ones that you enjoyed or did not like or anything like that? So, my favorite one as a child, we used to make Christmas plans. My sister and I are not close now, but when we were smaller, we would get together and we would divvy up jobs. Like, who's going to wake up mom and dad, or who's going to put out milk and cookies. And then when Ricky came along, and my sister had gotten kind of older and and didn't want to do it anymore, he and I would actually practice getting down the hallway so that it didn't make noise on Christmas Eve, so we could get into the den and look and see what was there. And then Ricky and I used to track Santa. There was a thing in the Times Union where you could dial 904-355-1500, and you put in the code 4646, which was ho, ho. And it told you every hour where Santa was, and a big map came in the newspaper. And we'd put it up in the living room and call every hour and track Santa until Mama made us go to bed. Oh, that's was, so cute. Yeah, it was. I didn't know they had that. Yeah, it was really fun. Now I think if you call that number, it's like the Greyhound Racing <laughs> number or something like that. So I take it you called it to see. <laughs> I, I may have. I may have done so. But it was just fun. I had a blast with Ricky growing up. And I have so many great memories of things that we did together. That's adorable. I always have aspirations to make the season so wonderful, and then it just doesn't work out. Well, what are some traditions you liked or didn't like growing up? I wouldn't say there were any I didn't like, other than the fact that Santa was ruined very early for us versus these kids. I mean, by the time, if you're young and still believe him, sorry, you might want (laughs) to not listen right now, but... Stop the podcast. (laughs) I think I was in the third grade when I found out Santa wasn't real. Haley was, like, in the sixth grade. (laughs) I'm looking at her like, I really want to ask her, you seriously still believe? But I'm like, then I would give it away. Yeah. So now Wyatt, he's in the fifth grade, and but he's also a year younger than her almost as far as the grade is concerned. So I'm still kind of looking at him because, you know, he's the youngest. I figure somebody would have told him by now, but he asked me where the elves are, and I'm like, shit, I haven't got him out yet. But my own personal... From when I was young, because, you know, it was just me and my mom, we would put on this very specific Christmas tape that had this, it was like church quartets, Mm -hmm. you know, because I love the way they sound, especially acapella. And we would put that tape on, we would unwrap all of the ornaments for the tree. My mom would buy, they're almost like these little toy ornaments, the real old fashioned looking ones. And I still have one of them. I don't know where the rest of them are. But we would unwrap those, we would decorate the tree together, and it was just this really cool little tradition that we would do. I've tried to carry that over with my kids, but they just don't seem as interested. (laughs) And it may or may not have something to do with the fact that I'm very controlling about where the ornaments go. (laughs) Maybe. I don't know why that would be a problem, but anyway. So are there any that, did you carry that over with your kids as far as the tracking or? Um. Josh would do some of the tracking with the boys using NORAD. But the one thing I carried over from being little is my mom, we always did sugar cookies. Mm. And come hell or high water, 
everybody was going to be there and do sugar cookies together. Because usually, like, Daddy worked midnights. Sometimes Sister didn't live with us, and things would happen. But by God, for Christmas, everybody was going to be awake and in the house to make Christmas cookies. So that's what I do with our family, and I've started doing it on Christmas Eve. And nobody eats them. Nobody in my house wants to eat these sugar cookies. Mm -hmm. But we take lots of time to roll them out, cut them out, decorate them, bake them, and then I throw them out. (laughs) <laughs> but the tradition is there. I think now that you said that, I'm going to make sure that we do at least the cookie thing. Yeah. But I enjoy that too. And the kids love, we eat ours though. I'm such a cookie monster. I I like to bake, especially around Christmas. Mm-hmm. I like to bake in general. Nobody at my house really is that big on baked goods. Now, if I could somehow manage to create Starburst (laughs) or sweet tarts, it would go over well, but nobody at my house would eat them. I like baked goods a lot. So if I make baked goods, no, don't. (laughs) Because I love to bake, but I don't bake because I'll be the one that eats it. Anyway, this last thing. Okay. Are there any of these traditions or anything that you had to do for Christmas that now that your boys are older, you're relieved you don't have to do anymore? I hate those friggin' elves on a shelf. Ditto. Like, the very first year you do it is really cute. Then it's just annoying. Now that the boys are older, we get them out, but they do inappropriate things. (laughs) Like, snort lines of... (laughs) powdered sugar or that's cute we have two elves one will chase the other one with a knife or i have a special dollar tree barbie doll that sometimes comes out to entertain Mm -hmm. the troops at christmas oh wow (laughs) but that's amazing yeah i hated that it was like so stressful i feel the same our elves Sometimes they would fall asleep at night and forget to go, so oh, they yeah. stayed in the same spot. I hear that happens. <laughs> Couple nights. Yes. Oh, I'm so forgetful and I hate it. But I'm so ready to be done with Santa. But what's funny is when Haley found out, she knew about Santa and she said something. And I was kind of like, I said something about Rosie, which is her elf. And she just like burst into tears. Oh. <laughs> I was so surprised. I was like, you thought... Even though Santa was real, that Rosie was real? I was like, what in the world? (laughs) Oops. You didn't put that together? (laughs) If not Santa, where is Rosie going? (laughs) All right. So we can go ahead and get started with our Christmas theme. Okay. What chilling tale do you have for us today? So I was very excited for this at first. And then I was disappointed at the end because of the lack of blood and gore. But whatever. (laughs) So, the topic is elves. Okay. Okay? So, the actual idea of elves began in mythology. So, Germanic mythology, English folklore, and Norse mythology. And they were originally thought of as a spirit of any kind. So, any kind of spirit they would call an elf. Mm -hmm. As time progressed, the idea began to shift more into light elves or dark elves and the Scottish belief of the Seelie and Unseelie courts. Are you familiar with that? No. Okay. So the Seelie court is basically like all the good elves. Okay. Or the elves that are helpful. And then the Unseelie court is all of the bad elves or the mischievous elves and the elves that want to trick humans to be their servants and stuff like that. Mm. I, of course... I'm partial to the unseelie courts, but whatever. (laughs) All of the elves were supposed to live in a place called Elfham. And there are some characteristics that carry over through all of the myths and folklore regarding elves. So even the good elves that lived in the seelie court were somewhat mischievous. Usually their mischief wasn't to harm anybody. It was more to entertain themselves. Kind of like fun pranks. Right. They were said to be very volatile. So whether it's a light elf or a dark elf, they tend to have a temper and it'll go off depending on what's going on around them. I might be an elf. I, I was thinking of like the Keebler elves in the tree. Yeah. Like, I'm going to set this bitch on fire. Uh, you know? 
<laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> right? That was what I was looking for. Okay. So <laughs> elves are said to be humanoid, and they're a mix between female looking and being androgynous. Mm -hmm. They're said to be immortal, which could come in handy. Yeah. They're magical. So they were described as small nature spirits by the Celts. So as time progressed, kind of whatever kind of magical, I don't, I don't want to say spirit, but like their magical gift. Okay. Even though they started as like nature magic where you could like make the wind blow or make the flowers bloom or, right. you know, this, it kind of changed later so that they had different magical gifts where they could like make you fall in love or uh, make you fall asleep or what kind of dreams were you going to have and things of that nature. So more controlling of the humans Well, even, versus nature. Even other elves. So just instead of yeah. magic dealing with nature, like we got something better here. They evolved. Right. <laughs> elves are known to be beautiful. There is an old English word that means elf beautiful. Like I said, elf <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, then. So beautiful with my well, lack of makeup and dirty hair that is about to get dyed. <laughs> you're beautiful and volatile, so. And you like to cause mischief sometimes. I can see how this would work out for you. <laughs> <laughs> I would never actually describe myself as beautiful, so let's just make sure that's clear. That we are beautiful the on the inside. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, one of my favorite things about elves. So they cannot tell lies, but they can kind of work around the truth. You know how somebody looks at you and they're like, do you like my haircut? And you say something that isn't like, oh, my gosh, who did that to your hair? But you say something like, wow, I can really tell you got something done. I'm an elf, obviously, because I'm very good at that. <laughs> I'd be like, um, it's not the best that you've ever had but it's not bad <laughs> look i straight up do the wow how long did that take <laughs> i hope you didn't pay for that <laughs> like that you try to work around it and still end up telling them that it's horrible <laughs> i'm not a very good liar yeah me so, neither yeah i'm it's not gonna work out for me well because i think when i was a teenager i remember some of my friends would be like oh, if you want to know the truth ask Kristen." Because they would be like, does this make me look fat? And I'd be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'd be like, I'm trying to help you out. I said, I didn't say you're fat. I said, that makes you look fat. <laughs> that dress is horrible. So then I, I figured, I was like, okay, so I got to be a little more tactful with that. And then I'm thinking of a very specific thing that happened. And so my friend put on this one outfit and she was like, um, does this look good on me? And I'm like, it's not as flattering as some of your other clothes. And she's just like, so it looks bad. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for trying to word it nicely. See, okay. I would rather somebody just be like, oh my gosh, that is horrible. Take it off. Yeah. Or like, give me a specific. If you just don't like it, I'm like, all right, it's fine. I like it. And I'll still wear it. But if you're like, it makes your hips look big. I'm like, yeah, that's not good. That's not something that I want. So let me change. I think I got wanting directness probably because that's the way mama always was. So I remember one time I had a sports bra on and she's like, what are you wearing? I was like, it's a sports bra. And she's like, you look like a prepubescent boy. Oh. And I was like, well, I guess sports bras are out. Yeah, no, I appreciate that as well. But I'm also very headstrong in the sense of like, well, I like it. So even if you don't like it and you think it's ugly, I'm still going to wear it. Well, my, so I'm very... know, if I'm going to jazzercise or something, of course I don't care. But mm -hmm. would I like roll out to Target afterwards in my sports bra? No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Hell no. I don't yeah. know why people do. Um, And, oh, this one's really good. So the only way you can kind of like capture them or contain them is with iron. Okay. So iron hurts them or can burn them. So if you want to contain them, you have to wrap them in a chain of iron. Hmm. Because otherwise they're magical. They're out. But iron is the key. Hmm. I'm so fascinated how similar all the different folklore tales are in some way, shape, or form. The, like, something to do with nature, something to do with controlling humans, having to have some kind of a metal or wood mm -hmm. or something to control them. It's like, I just wonder, like, 
is there actually something that people just interpret in different ways at different times related to something that they're familiar with at the time? So, I mean, even, even thinking about aliens, ghosts, you know, like these yeah. big monsters that people see in the woods, like Bigfoot, or I've heard of the most recent one that I've never heard of before was sheep, sheep something that's up in the Appalachian Mountains. I don't know that one. I know Sean the sheep. Yeah, it's, um, sh- it's not sheep man, but it's, <laughs> it's well, oh, sheep man. Sheep squatch. Sheep, sheep squatch. So like man. Sasquatch, but sheep squatch. Sheep. He sounds oh, terrifying, but that sounds like when you eat too many crystals and you gotta go sheep squatch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any Pepto Bismol? I've got the sheep squatch. Oh my god, that's what I'm gonna call it from now on. <laughs> I've got the sheep squatches. <laughs> I messed up. It's okay. All right. So legends more about the dark elves in norse mythology the dark elves were called the svart svart alfheim svart alfheim and i had to put that in the google translation thingy and have it read it to me because it's spelled s-v-a-r-t-a with the thingy l-f-a-h-e-i-m-r and i'm like this is a lot of vowels (laughs) Versus uh, Russian, that's a lot of consonants. <laughs> I'm like, mm. but the Dark Elves, the Celts called them Dusith. <gasps> like Star Wars. I, you know, I'm not into Star Wars. Neither am I, but I know that Sith has to do with the bad guys. And Isn't that like some kind of a sword or something? No, a the Sith? Sith is the like group of bad people. They're the oh. Sith, they're the bad guys. I just I thought there was also like a Sith was some kind of a weapon. Are you thinking of size? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well Sith Tomato tomato. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm not into Star Wars. Josh loves Star Wars. And on our last cruise we went on our Disney cruise, they had a special Star Wars themed bar. Mm-hmm. And so we went in there and Josh was really excited and it's full of all these people our age, like geeking out over it. (laughs) And I told Josh, I was like, I have never in my life thought that I would end up in a place where I wasn't nerdy enough. (laughs) Like I feel out of place for being too cool for you Star Wars people. I'm going to have to leave now. I I don't get it. I did have a really good drink. (laughs) It was an excellent drink. I used to look kind of crazy at people like that because it's like, oh my gosh, you just get immersed into these worlds and I just don't get it. But now I just think nerdiness is so cute. I just, I love that someone unabashedly dive into something that they care about and do not care what others think. And then they'll just find others that like the same things that they like. I love that because I feel like in school you're growing up and you're so worried about what everybody else thinks and you you almost become somebody that you're not because you're so trying to fit in. Mm -hmm. So I love when I see these people that just like what they like, they own it. Find people like them and just live your life. Live your, live life. your best life. I love that. What's funny is Danny loves Star Wars too. They have so much in common, really. Well, next time they can go to the Star Wars bar together. All the drinks were Star Wars themed. I, I didn't get any of it. But apparently you can let Danny know that the Sith are dark elves. Okay. We found out. Oh, I did read that somewhere. Yes. So... So dark elves are not inherently evil. Um, They venture out at night, and I love this. They would often kidnap or lure musicians into their service. Because basically, they party all the time. (laughs) Those elves want to party all the time, party all the time, party all the time. You can't see, but we're having a dance party. (laughs) That's right. Dark elves are sometimes described as deformed or ugly. But I think it's scarier to think that, like, all the elves look the same and you don't know if it's from the Seelie Court or the Unseelie Court. Because, I mean, that's the way humans are. I was just going to say, I mean, like, people are that way. So maybe they're just kind of like, that's what we know. Some people are ugly and some people are beautiful. And we do tend to think that beauty equates good. Right. So the dark elves were blamed for a couple of things. The first one is causing disease in humans and in cattle. So... If you're in bed, super sick, you got tuberculosis, you're like, well, there was a dark elf that came by, totally screwed Kristen over, gave her the tuberculosis. 
Yeah. Or if your cattle were unhealthy and they were dying out in the field, they would say a dark elf had come by and done something to your cattle or magically inflicted them with something. I can understand once you already have the belief in elves, but like who started it? Was there like some weirdo who walked by your cattle and then they got sick and you're like, that was a dark elf? Well, <laughs> it says the oh idea God. of elves began in Germanic mythology, English folklore, and Norse mythology. It's kind of like when we were talking about the whole vampire thing and we were saying, you know, as an excuse to not get blamed for something. Yeah. So I'm sure at some point it was kind of like, you know, you don't understand the disease that's killed off your cattle. It's much easier to figure a dark elf rode by and jacked them all up. Or maybe you didn't feed them right and you don't want to own up. <laughs> right. Like, oops, I forgot to feed the cattle. Now they're dead. Um, dark elves were also blamed for causing bad dreams. And the German word for nightmare, if you look up the actual meaning, means elf pressure. Yes, I actually addressed that very briefly in mine. Okay. Is it about there's an elf that will sit on your chest? Mm-hmm. Yes. You okay. know what it's called? I will keep going because I'm going to let you do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are also blamed for aligning with demons to harm humans, mm -hmm. the very bad ones. And this one is more of what I'm going to focus on for a minute. They are also accused of stealing newborn children and replacing them with changelings. Oh, you know, I have heard that before. That's crazy. Yeah. So a common way that a changeling would identify itself is through unusual behavior when it thinks it's alone. So you think you have a newborn baby. Really, the elves have swapped your baby out for sometimes, let's see, they exchange the children with fairy children or elf children. And in rare cases, the baby would be taken and a very old elderly elf would be exchanged in the place of the baby so that the elderly elf could live out its life in comfort. So like a reincarnation kind of thing almost? No, like your baby is an old elf who's just trying to live his best life before he dies. But I mean, does it look like an old elf? I mean, like what makes them think that it was changed out? Well, apparently they're supposed to look like the infant that got changed out. When it thinks it's alone, it might jump, dance... Or play an instrument. <laughs> Nowadays, we'd be like, prodigy. Right. <laughs> um, I even read one story about they found out it was a changeling because it ended up growing its beard hair back. <laughs> and I'm like, really? <laughs> so, you know, whatever. In order to keep your baby from being taken and you raising a changeling, simple charms such as inverted coats, or open iron scissors left where the child sleeps would ward them off. I'm just pointing out that open iron scissors next to your baby yeah. might not be the best choice. I mean, if they're infant, not so much, but as they start moving around, definitely not. I have bad luck. What if that baby bumps into something, or if I bump into something and the knives fall? No. What was the other one? An inverted coat? Inverted coat. I guess if you put your jacket over the baby, inside out. Hmm. I don't know how that makes sense. So some stories tell of changelings who forget they're not human and they just live a human life. They grow at different rates than human children do. But as they progress, they just go on living like they're not elves and fairies. Changelings who do not forget in some stories return to their family leaving the human family without warning, which again would make sense that, you know, if your child went missing instead of facing the fact that maybe something happened to them, you'd yeah. say they were a changeling and they went back to their family. Um, the human child that was taken often stays with the fairy family forever. And <laughs> feeling connected to the fate of the changeling baby, some families turn their changeling loose into the wilderness. What? Yes, just like be free. So that's the old-fashioned um, asylum. Probably. Just like that kid was them. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. The fairies can have you now. Right. Or they might have killed their own children because, you know, 
that happens, unfortunately. And then, yeah. oh, the fairies took them, so nobody Which, looks into it. They were a changeling. Yeah. Ah. So why did they take human children? Many factors, the top three being for the child to be their servant. So they would raise the child to be the family servant just because they loved the human child. Like, you know how you watch Maleficent, the one with Angelina Jolie, mm -hmm. and she actually starts taking care of Aurora because yeah. she kind of like that. Or just for malice and spite. Just because they could, they will steal your baby and they will leave you with a changeling baby who, when it's alone, will take a comb to its beard and start playing the Scottish bagpipes. Which I love. I know a lot of people don't, but... Well, okay, I have a question, because in all the different studies of things that I start looking into, and just because I get curious, I mean, obviously, I've come across some stories of elves and fairies and stuff. Is it elves or fairies that kind of encompass all of the different, like a leprechaun and all that? One of those, I remember I looked up the leprechaun, and I think it was either an elf or a fairy, and I can't remember which one it was. Well, when I was researching this, it said that a lot of times elves and fairies kind of get meshed into one thing, where they're referred to synonymously, even though that's not the way they started out. Yeah. So they used to be separate, but now, after so much time has passed, I mean, think about all the different folklore and stories, and it's 2020, so now it all just kind of gets bundled all together. And language differences. Right. And, yeah, words meaning different things. So knowing that elves can be malicious and volatile, and they can give you elf pressure and steal your baby, <laughs> is Santa an elf? What do you think? Oh, I mean, are we on a hypothetical that Santa's real? I mean... <laughs> yes. Pretend like, yes. Um, I, I have a hard time separating it from the actual myth of, or like him being Saint Nicholas, you know, but I, it just, I guess, depends on the folklore or whatever. Do I think he's an elf? No. He seems like a man. I don't know. I know they, they called him an elf in the one story that I used to read all the time to the kids. So, according to the tale, Twas the Night Before Christmas, yeah. he's referred to as a fat, jolly old elf. And that's the first time he's referred to as an elf. So, that's where the legend of Santa being an elf comes from. Crazy enough, that's also where we learn the name of his reindeer. Before that, they didn't have names, but... Yeah. So, according to legend, elves, fairies, and witches are able to enter homes through chimneys. It's like an open doorway that they can use their magic to enter homes. Right. So this makes sense that if Santa has the power to enter your home through a chimney, he must be an elf. Also, the Norse believed that elves could just walk through walls because they weren't bound by the laws of man. Hmm. So like when I was growing up, we didn't have a chimney. And we didn't have the Santa key that they have now. Mom was just like, he just comes in. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So that would lend credence to that point. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of Florida parents had to say that. Because there's not as many fireplaces, I think, here as there probably are over in Europe. Right. So in Scandinavian culture, Santa is more elf-like with his size and physical appearance. So they have him as being small and more of an elf than here in the United States where he's a big fat dude. Yeah. In the Nordic tradition, Santa is known as the Yule Elf. So that's more for a Yule Elf. So I wanted to throw this in here because I read this man was being so, how do I want to say it? <laughs> he was so passionate with this plea about Catholics not introducing Santa to their children because of St. Nicholas, who, according to Catholicism, has nothing to do with Santa Claus at all. He's simply a saint that could perform miracles, and he wandered through the countryside giving away his wealth. That was St. Nicholas. So this man was vehemently about, like, don't introduce this to your children. Keep it. St. Nicholas, the actual saint, the patron saint, this is what we're doing. Totally different from Santa Claus. Others say that this same St. Nicholas died and was reincarnated as an elf who ultimately became Santa Claus. Okay. So I guess it just kind of depends on, like, your idea of Santa, basically what you grew up with. 
Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are like, but he's really, he's portrayed as a man. But that's just here in the United States. So they don't, I, I didn't do a whole lot of research into Santa Claus on this one just because I wanted to keep the story a little shorter, but um, maybe next year we'll delve into that deeper. Well, ultimately, I was very disappointed in the lack of tales about ev- evil elves, evil Christmas elves, Santa being evil. There really wasn't a lot of blood and gore, murder, destruction. The biggest thing was, you know, they're going to lure you as a servant. They're going to lure you if you're a musician because they want to party, and they might change your baby out. Have you seen that? Um, I think it's it's on Netflix, but I think it's either the Netherlands or Denmark, one of those countries in that area, where they've had it translated into English. But I mean, their mouths are moving different. <laughs> but it's you know, but it's in English. It's called Elves. I think I've it came seen out last it. year. It's on Netflix, but I haven't watched the whole thing. I have to be really careful because sometimes stuff like that is just kind of like to me. It can be, and that's another one of those shows where, like, these people were just idiots, and they wouldn't have ended up in the situation had they not been so dumb. They're just those kinds of like, oh, we're not going to respect your traditions, um, your traditions, and your your ways, and your you know, oh, don't go here, and oh, it's fine. But those elves were nasty. Did you see them? Mm-mm. Ooh. When I think of elves being evil and doing mischievous things, I think of the movie Gremlins. Yeah. I don't know why, but that's what I think of, like, when they're at the movie theater and they're, like, throwing popcorn and stuff like that. I just, and again, this may be just because I messed up, but, like, I love A Bad Mom's Christmas and stuff like that, National Lampoon Christmas Vacation, where it's very humorous, but there aren't any good horror movies about Christmas. I think there's one called Black Christmas, Mm -hmm. which was okay. But can we have, like, a quality movie where Santa and his elves are breaking into people's homes not to give stuff, but to, like, shank people? Can we have that? Shank people. Well, there is that Bad Santa that's out, and I haven't seen it, but it just looks like a action movie, and uh, I don't know. But, um, I mean, I know it's not Santa, but you've got Krampus. I don't know if you've seen that. I haven't seen it. I was going to wait for today for your story. Before I watch that, because I'm not actually that familiar with Krampus. the folklore behind him. I don't remember it that much, but I did watch it and I thought it was okay, I guess. I just, I don't remember it much except him just trying to get in and they were trying to battle him from getting in or whatever. I don't remember why he was coming in or for who or for what. And I know it was freaky. But I'll, I'll get into that a little bit for here. But I, there's multiple Krampus movies. Mm-hmm. And there's another one that has Krampus. And, and like I said, I was going to talk about this later, but it's, it works now. So there's another one that has Krampus. And I think it's elves. But it's, um, what do you call them? Were they raised from the dead? Zombie elves. So I haven't seen it. I don't know if it's any good. You've got different rating systems, so some say it's good, some say it's terrible. Well, I just feel like if we can make an entire movie series about the leprechaun, surely we can make one about, like, an evil elf who gets tired of seeing a shit and (laughs) goes out to find his long-lost family and then found out that they were killed, so he, you know, is going to have retribution on... I mean, I could come up with some shit if somebody will just make the movie. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the... um? What's those the two newer movies right now where it's uh, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn? I didn't like those. But, I mean, I think it was the second... They had mischievous elves. I, want, I thought they were super cute. I want evil bad elves. No, no, they're smoking just... Smoking cigarettes <laughs> on motorcycles. <laughs> Well, yeah. let's create it. Wife beaters, <laughs> you know, I I don't know. I just, I have an idea, so. We'll write some books. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll make them into movies. Sounds good. Okay. So, speaking of Krampus, I'm going to tell you about one of the chillingest characters Ooh. <laughs> of all times, in my opinion. Krampus, the demonic anti-Santa. There we go. This 
Half man, half goat like creature looks very similar to many illustrations of the devil. He appears in folklore of Austria, Bavaria or Bavaria, Croatia, the Czech Republic, Hungary, Northern Italy, autonomous province of Trento, Ooh. and South Tyrol, Slovakia, and Slovenia. There are many different depictions, but mostly his black or brown hairy body stands upright on cloven hooves. A very long snake-like tongue shows through his long fangs. Goat-like horns on top of his head to finish off one of the most terrifying creatures I've ever seen. So, like, normally when they produce the creature on movies, it's like, what? This guy shows up? I'm like, (laughs) fuck my nightmares from this point on. And I think he has a tail, too, but I just didn't see that. The tail would be the pièce de résistance. I can't remember what that means. Like the icing on the cake. Yes. Okay. I thought that's what you meant, but I wasn't real sure, and I didn't want to be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure do love that. Yes. Yeah. I agree. It is the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Krampus is said to visit throughout the Christmas season, but especially on December 5th, the night before the Feast of St. Nicholas. Okay. In America... Santa is responsible for deciphering between the naughty and the nice. He has a naughty list and everything, and nobody wants to be on it. Nope. Naughty list equals no gifts. At worst, a stocking full of coal. In many European cultures, Santa only deals with the good. Krampus does the dirty work. I just have to say, I really respect these parents for being like, y'all are just being really horrible. And guess who's going to come visit you? It's not anything nice. Like, oh, you don't get a present. Like, this thing's going to come. It's like Satan. Yes. It's going to come for you. Now, go (laughs) clean up your room. (laughs) Yeah. It's pretty terrifying. I know when I was a kid, I would have been like, I'll be good. I'll be good. You want me to clean your room? I'll clean your room. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, you do not want to be on Krampus's naughty list. Krampus shows up in chains to warn and punish the naughty, which the chains are not always a part of his depiction, but I mean, Sounds kinky. definitely gives it a extra creep factor. Yeah, I did. I think I read that it was related to some say that Santa has conquered him and sent him to hell, except for this night. So I guess he's kind of like Santa's slave that comes and does his dirty work. So... Elf-like behavior. Hmm. Volatile. <laughs> Maybe he Mischievous. also played music. <laughs> might, might have. But um, he carries birch branches to beat bad children. <laughs> so, a switch. That's, that's, again, total respect. It's not go outside and find a switch for me to get you with. It's the Krampus is bringing his own switch. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Okay. That's if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. So, like Santa, he carries a sack. But this is a whole different kind of sack. It's one you can disappear into. Hmm. For some, it's a basket. But I like the sack better. Seems like you can just throw it over. Ha, ha, ha. (laughs) (laughs) But, um. So, if they're really bad, he just throws them in there and they just disappear. The children are just gone? I didn't really see why he chose or why he would do certain things. I mean, I know over the years it got a little lighter. Like, oh, he hits you with some sticks. Sticks, yeah. Go out there and pick out your switch. But, um, yeah, it gets real dark. Because some would get stuffed inside that, that sack and hauled off to his lair. And he would torture or even eat them. What? And some he would take straight to hell. Oh. So, and I read somewhere else that he drowns them sometimes. So maybe that's part of the, yeah, maybe that's part of the torture. So I'm like, okay, eaten. Maybe he got hungry on the way. He's got a big night ahead of him. Straight to hell. Total asshole kids. Drown. He was an asshole and annoying. It's like, I can't handle this kid the whole night. I got to go ahead and drown him and move on. (laughs) That's, that's rough. I understand for like misbehavior, but damn. And they're going to straight up said, waterboard you. And You said you wanted bad elves. I mean, that's, I mean, he's there. <laughs> he definitely is. That's scary as all get out. Okay. 
So it's believed Krampus stems from the Alpine region's ancient pagan goddess, Perchta, responsible for clearing the streets of evil spirits. Perchta was often depicted by women. There would be a fight between a young, beautiful Perchta and an old, ugly, haggardly Perchta. And this was obviously back in pagan days. And they would have masks on, so it wasn't like you could see who it was necessarily. One would be like a beautiful mask and one would be like an ugly one or even like an old whatever. And sometimes even back in those days, they would, women would have their, their breasts out during this. And it's believed that it goes back to a tradition. And I think it was Northern Italy that had this folklore as well. And it was related to some fighting tradition that was something to do with fertility. And I don't know if it was fertility related to just women fertility or like fertile grounds. And it was just like something that they did some festival or what do you call that? Before you get into something, you do like a little ceremony, but it's called something I can't think of it right now. But anyway, so they think it stemmed from that possibly, but it kind of makes sense because it's like you've got this old haggardly woman that's not fertile anymore. And then you've got the, the young fertile one with the breasts showing and everything. And so she's trying to fight off the infertility, I guess. Okay. So later and now, perch tin, which is multiple are depicted as goat-like humanoid with a giraffe-like neck who wear furs. So there's an annual Perchten pagan festival in Bavaria, Germany, where people dress up as the scary-looking Perchten and roam the village streets to run off evil spirits who like to hide in the winter fog, which is similar to some Krampus celebrations. And I've seen some pictures. I'm going to see if I can find some to put them up. They're pretty freaking cool. I probably would have been terrified as a kid, but as an adult, <laughs> it would be nice. These are really cool. But I think the kids really get into it because they showed some pictures of them, like picking kids up and flipping them over. And this kid is just like smiling. Of course, it could be her dad. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, I think as a child hearing the Krampus story, I wouldn't have been scared until you got to the part about like drowning them or taking them to hell. The eating them, uh, I wouldn't have been as scared, but. I mean, we kind of have that with the devil. Well, that's what I'm saying, but you're scared of the devil because he's going to take you to hell. I would not be scared of the Krampus coming in to switch me or something like that. But when you get to that other stuff, I'm like, mm. mm-hmm. so maybe like when they go to those festivals, that's like something they leave out. Yeah. And I think they're, you know, you grow up with it. I, I did read some people's comments on what it was like to grow up with it. And m- many of them were like, I was terrified and excited at the same time. (laughs) It was like I was scared and I looked forward to the festivals and, you know, thinking about the Krampus, like with, with, you know, with Santa Claus and all of that. So anyway, so like Perchta, many towns have gatherings, festivals, and parades to continue the 1,500-year tradition of celebrating Krampus. Young men dress up in fur wood masks, and cowbells, and roam the streets to rid the town of evil spirits. All right. Also to scare Mm. women and children. (laughs) As a bonus. Yes, and I'm sure that is fun. Like, the boys never grow up. But there, I also watched a little short video where it's this man who makes the masks, and he still lives up in the Alpine villages, and some of these villages are very similar to how they were back in the day. They still have all of the same skill set, like carving the wood. Mm Mm-hmm. There was a time where some people switched over to plastic because it was cheaper and easier. But then eventually they're just like, no, we're only doing the wood masks. We're If we're going to be traditional, we're going to be traditional. These masks are terrifying. If I saw these as a kid, mm-mm, I'm not going. <laughs> they're terrifying. You have to see. I mean, they look like straight up demons or what you would picture demons as. These masks are inspired by tales of demonic mountain spirits who wreak havoc in the winter. Mm. One such demon was the Alp, similar to a vampire in that it likes to suck blood from the nipples, or thought of as an elf. Oh. So, from what I read in those days and what they believed, and this is Austrian, Northern Germany, Mm -hmm. those types of beliefs in that area, were that... Elves were demons. They were evil spirits. So I don't know if this was pre-dated of the more fun elves, or maybe they only had experiences with the bad ones. They lived in a completely different place. 
And you were talking about the one that lays on your chest. Yes. That is this one. Oh. It's believed that the Alp, there were many, many different things that it talked about, but it was a very fascinating creature. I just did not want to get too into it because it would have gotten really long and I got off the topic of Krampus. But just because it kind of flowed into, it was one of those demonic mountain spirits that they were trying to get rid of. Mm -hmm. But based off of things that the Alp was known to do, because it had that old maid or what, I can't remember what it's called, but it's what people describe as sleep paralysis now. Okay. So when people have sleep paralysis, they, many people report seeing the same type of thing. And it's like either this dark, old, haggardly woman or some kind of man, I can't remember. And sometimes it's on your chest and like holds you down where you can't breathe. Right. They also think it might be considered the lucid dreaming that some people have. So I don't know. Uh, those seem like two very opposite things to me. Like a, a sleep paralysis, it's like you have zero control over it. Right. And the lucid dreaming, you can control that, can't you? Your lucid dreams? How it's supposed to be? You can't to a certain point, but I mean, think about it. When you dream at night, there's not much control that you have over it. So Yeah. I mean. Your brain is basically going to do whatever it wants to do when you're sleeping. That's what a dream is. Right. I mean, I feel like in my dream, I feel like I'm in control until my arms won't move. But I never have those real lifelike. I mean, I have had ones that feel so real. And sometimes I have to remember, is that, did that really happen? Is it a dream? Sometimes it's almost there like a memory, like it's something that actually happened. But I've never had, and hopefully I never get the sleep paralysis because it sounds terrifying. It sounds very scary. Yeah, I'm not into that thought process. So let's just not. <laughs> so... Some say Krampus is not related to Christmas at all. Like he predates the whole St. Nicholas thing. His roots date back to pre-Germanic paganism in the region. His name originates from the German Krampen, which means claw. So I don't know what he would have been called before because they said it was pre-Germanic, but then they say the German Krampen meaning claw. So it's like maybe they just renamed it. So what was it before? Is um, it the perch to... Or maybe that was a pre-Germanic word that they adopted into German. Yeah, maybe. So he's also thought, based off some legends, that he's the son of the Norse god of the underworld. I think his name was Hell. <laughs> okay. But then why does he roam around Earth? You know, usually they have the some Krampus? kind of... Well, if he's the son of Hell... He's coming up to bring children to Hell. I mean, I guess. That's a valid point. That's only the one time a year. It's always during winter and when it's cold and dark and nothing's growing. And so it's like the season Again, of the dead. You got to wonder how many of these people like ate their children for food. And they're like, well, the Krampus got them come spring. I don't know where Billy went. I know because there somebody was one of my podcasts did one on one of the major famines in Europe. And it lasting years to the point where some people did resort to eating children. Yeah. I would hope to think that I would rather die than do that, but I don't want to judge because I'm not in that position. I don't know what it's like to be starving that much. Well, I have been starving, and I wouldn't have eaten a child. I wouldn't say it's by choice, but it wasn't because <laughs> you I couldn't. Mean, I wasn't Like, there eating was anything. nothing. I'm just pointing it out. Yes, but you could. Okay. Fine. It was there in front of your face, but you just, like, couldn't in a different way. Fine. You didn't want to eat a cow, much less a kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. So, in the 12th century, the devilish appearance of Krampus, I didn't word this correctly, because of the devilish appearance of Krampus, the Inquisition mm -hmm. attempted to ban these celebrations punishable by death. Oh. The Inquisition is like a whole story in and of itself. Yeah, they, and they were the real evil crazy people. evil. Yes. Even though they banned this, the remote mountain towns in the Alps, in the Alpine towns, whatever, these traditions still survived. So it never really went away. So in the 17th century, there was a resurgence of the celebrations, adding Krampus as the dark counterpart to St. Nick. Very nice. I appreciate it. Yes. So about 500 years <laughs> ago. So he's been around for a very long time still. But Krampus celebrations are growing in America because we're so fascinated with the dark. Right. Because <laughs> I think we've been so watered down for so many years that we're like, look, evil exists, you know, just. Well, and I think that people want to know 
the background culture of their family. Yes. So if your family came from Germany or Austria and they brought this idea over, that's your culture, so you want to bring it back. And I think there's a resurgence of that where probably like when our parents were growing up, they were trying to move from it to become Americanized. Mm -hmm. And now it's everybody trying to go back and find their culture that they've lost. Yeah. I'm very fascinated to find out where all of the origins are and all the, the folklore and how we got where we are. I think I told you before, I feel like history should be taught backwards because it becomes like a why, 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 how do we get here? And so, and something I was reading, a lot of the things that we have as our Christmas tradition about Jesus's birth and all that, I mean, other than it, it seems kind of obvious that more than likely he was born a different time of year. Right. I don't care about that. We're celebrating it. doesn't really matter when. Kind of like I told you, we don't always celebrate our anniversary on our anniversary right. as long as we celebrate it. But a lot of the different things about what we know actually are not in the Bible. And so I'm like, oh, okay, let me go research that. So I like that kind of stuff. I like, okay, where did this come from? Why? Is it just a story? It's cool. I don't mind keeping it, but I want to make sure everybody knows that this is the part that's in the Bible. This right. is not. But um, so anyway, so Krampus... There are a lot of comics about it, or there's some comics, video games, novels, and many movies. There's Krampus the Christmas Devil. This is what I was going to tell you about. A Christmas horror story, Krampus and Zombie Elves. Oh. It was made in 2015. I've never seen it. Uh, I've only seen Krampus, but there's a bunch of these, so I, I'm guessing it's the one that was Krampus in 2015. But then there was Krampus 2, The Devil Returns, Krampus, The Reckoning, Krampus Unleashed, Krampus Origins, Krampus, The Return. <laughs> That's this year, actually. Right. So you got plenty of Christmas devils to watch. Perfect. Well, that's the chilling tale, chillingest tale. Chilling is the most chilling tale. <laughs> of Krampus. That was pretty good. Thank you. Now I'm going to have to watch the Krampus movies. Yeah, and we'll have to write some elf horror stories. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. So thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed our Christmas special, if you want to call it that. Yes. <laughs> so remember to rate and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Is there anything you want to mention before we sign off? Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, and Happy Hanukkah to everyone who listens to us. Happy holidays. So until we meet again in 2023... Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Oh, oh, oh. Bye. Bye.